This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 665. I'm Mike Sorgan, Sorgatron on Twitter, here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready on this uh, uh, this this night, the darkest of nights, the post the, the post wild card era here with WWE and pro wrestling, but there's plenty going on here. We got a crew with us. First of all, we have from Beacon, New York. He's the only Mayhemer with a future endeavored letter from the WWE. And if he wasn't future endeavored, I'm sure he would have quit by now. <laughs> Welcome to TNA's Joker's Wild. <laughs> uh, don't laugh too hard. I got I got TNA action figures thanks to the great Jim LaMotta in the background over here. So sword, there is a sword. presence. I have, I have TNA action figures from eight years ago that I forgot I had that I just unpacked when I moved to Beacon. This is about that era, actually, so some really good ones. Also we probably with have us, the same ones. Also with us from uh, here in Pittsburgh, but across in the pleasant the pleasantness of hills, uh, <laughs> he's our friend in the mainstream media, mainstream Matt. Uh, how you doing, Sorgi? I know we, you weren't supposed to come back for a little bit, um, but, but, I but know. So, something brought you out of retirement. I wasn't supposed to come back no. for like another month. We were supposed to do a big hype campaign. We're going to do like a Y2J save, I thought, save us. I thought like, this was all it. part of the wild card this thing. This is an emergency. This is an so. emergency. <laughs> I thought this was all part of the wild card showdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got up done. Yeah, the, the Sorgatron shakeup. You mean, you mean, yeah. you mean the smack? Sorg, this means, this means two of us can jump to Awesome Cast next week. Right? That is true. They're, actually, we took a picture. Three of us wore pro wrestling T-shirts on the Awesome Cast earlier today. Uh, and we, we have a picture we'll be posting later on Instagram. Uh, anyways, by the way, sporting the, the David Lawless, the gavel, of course, while we're at it. Uh, but also with us is your friend and mine in the world of safety is Ronnie Starks. Hello, everyone. Hey, I, am, I am from the Harmer of the Bill. The Harmer of the Bill. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, you are out there yeah, a I little am. bit. Yeah. Right by the fun zone. Uh, Harmer of the Bill. Whatever it's called now. Harver I know, zone 42 or 22 or something. Or 78 or there you 69. Go. Hey, or... pull your bike down a little bit. You're kind of hiding yeah. behind it a little bit. There you go. Good enough? Yeah, there you go. Can you guys see my pretty face? Yeah, there he is. That's the guy. And also, you can match. He's the one on the Wheaties box right behind him. Right you know, we have. Um, I will have you know that I uh, refused to give back my safety vest from a job recently, <laughs> just to prepare for this episode. Ah, there you go. Is this good? It looks, this looks good. Great. You All right. are ready the, for the tea is going by and watching me put this on mm -hmm. right now. There's nothing safe about that tea. There's the nothing road. safe by the tea on the road. I'm sure somebody's got hit by that tea before. <laughs> um, I, well. Yeah, there's. It's actually an ongoing issue. Actually, we should do something. Oh my God, we're doing a promo. We're doing. Listen, listen. There. Okay, so Ronnie Starks. If you're not familiar, Ronnie Starks is part of a group called OSHA Inc. Here locally, I, I share the gifts and videos of them all the freaking time because <laughs> I think it's one of the best thing in local indie wrestling lately. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> but um, but but you guys have been doing these videos about this this church that should have been torn down like a week ago. Oh yeah. And you're shaming the the, the town of McKeesport with this. And we legit have some walkability and issues around things that have not been done around here that were promised like three years ago mm -hmm. in Beachview. <laughs> Can we just? So is OSHA is OSHA like for hire <laughs> at this point? No, absolutely. You just name the time and place. We will come and we will take care of it in the most comedic way possible. There you go. There you go. Also, I, we were talking about maybe it'll be on Facebook here soon, but uh, you can find uh, the adventures of OSHA and, and the Beastman on YouTube, uh, as well as um, uh, what was that latest series called in general? Uh, just what is it? OSHA versus McKeesport. OSHA, OSHA versus McKeesport, Pennsylvania. <laughs> We'll share this all in the group here in due time. If anybody knows where that's at on the YouTube, please drop it into the face into the I'm sorry the Facebook uh, chat. And uh, anyways, 
But this is the Wrestling Man Show. We'll talk a little more about uh, safety and everything, as I am the safest of podcasters right now. <laughs> um, but uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Intro by our buddy Basic Sickness. Who we un- I understand Basic Sickness and Happy Hour. We're hanging out this week. Happy Hour, the wrestler that we've had recently. Don't worry about the white panel van outside that's going to haul us all away. That's not creepy at all at, uh, at 930 at night. sitting there? Oh, it happens. Maybe he's getting tacos or maybe he's uh, getting a haircut. I don't know. Well, you, this is what happens at Beachview. That's not even a parallel parking spot. Like, no, not even a little bit. Road. Just not even a little bit. People don't care around here. Can't fix but it. anyways, uh, <laughs> go, go, go hand him a violation. <laughs> I'll be right back. Uh, yes. So oh, no, no, I, that reminds window. me. I forgot to prepare that one thing. We'll see about doing it for the second half. Okay. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> there's enough that we screwed up this episode. Uh, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform. You can ask your Google Home to play us, uh, uh, play the show on, I believe, through Google Play Music or Google Podcasts or ask your Amazon Echo to play the Wrestling Mayhem Show on, uh, IT- or on TuneIn. Uh, also, hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com uh, or four one two two zero six WMS zero. Do 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 do. Tweet us at Mayhem Show uh, and check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show page and group where we are live on the Facebook page every Tuesday at nine p.m. Eastern time. Except tonight we had some technical difficulties. It happens. It's all right. We're coming eventually. We'll get a little drop a note if we're not making it. You can also do do do. Thank you to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh users over there thank you everybody that's supporting the show with that uh at the fan of the show one dollar love our friends bo diggity as well as ed burke by bobby f j town tina keys the nat the matthew and jennifer carlin's foundation for podcast betterment and our buddies team hammerfist down south as well as our friends at the pocky club five dollar level you guys are getting some extra bits out there including the mayhem's af- mayhem after darks uh including our friends bradley ruthers who i think was a, 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 a member it was in the huddle with you guys this weekend yeah, sit down mark <laughs> doc remedy dave potter of the tiny shutter podcast kyle turner and daniel towery and brand new brand new patreon ring the bell we need a bell uh, uh yeah. at the pizza club ten dollar level is ryan clark with 13 dollars by the way wow. is yes. a part of it also i believe you're wait are you out of this mic are you out of the I, manager level? It, it, it's gonna be May, sort. It's gonna wait. It's what, gonna be May. Wait, wait, wait. Does that mean you have another month? No. Oh no, you're not. Okay, so no, de- I'm out. No, you're I, out. I, delete I Mad grateful. Mike. Mad Mike no longer supports the show. Delete, 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 delete. delete, delete. delete. Hey, he's got a budget. I understand that happens. <laughs> and uh, but uh, uh, at the manager uh, twenty dollar level, I do believe Occupy Pro Wrestling is still there. I'm sure I owe him something. Well, they got Patreon. That's for, Patreon in the back. That's for sure. But you guys can support the show also. We got a lot of great content in the works at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and help keep the lights on here in mayhem. Or, I'm sorry, studio. Which studio? The Sorgatron Media Studios. Hold on. Let me let me go back. Let me double check that look. Oh, there it is. Sorgatron Media Studios dot com. It's right there on the window. Mm-hmm. With thousands of people see on the T every single day. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, you know, I was gonna we we're gonna have t- fun and tomfoolery and and safety jokes all day. But then mainstream Matt had to go write an article. And uh, if you go over to wrestlingmayhemshow.com, you will see a said article. Uh, there's a little picture of Vince McMahon up there on the front page, and it says we need to talk about Monday Night Raw. And mainstream Matt started the conversation about Monday Night Raw, and I believe that extended the Twitter as well. Uh, so I, it, this was required reading for everybody on the show tonight. Uh, was it? Did everyone read it? Okay. What's that? I didn't read it. I, I read it. I mean, Ryan, I didn't read it. I've watched Raw for the past year and a half, so I pretty much know the gist. <laughs> but, but, but you had... No, I'm kidding. I, I read the article. So, read so, the article. so, Matt, I mean, you... Not really an article more. It felt like more like a diary entry. Yeah, I had to get these things out of my brain so i could get on with my life so so, so you, you know with the so the articles if you read the sheets are talking about um how um the it's may sweeps week um matt you are involved in may sweeps week and that actually weighs heavy on your own job too so you know the you know how heavy this is and have no, an idea of what this could mean i'm sorry time with you, yes um, 
it's 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 May. It, it's the four week May ratings period. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like ad rates are getting set, and so like that first Monday Night Raw, um, a week ago Monday, that was the first Raw of this ratings period, and it went, you know, right into the tank. So it was all hands on deck last night, and there it was. And that's what we got. I know. Yeah, well, I mean, look, here's the gist, right? Like, the, the, the troubling thing about last night's Raw for me is that it was like an all-hands-on-deck, like, maximum effort, all-out situation on WWE's part. So that's, so, like, in, in as far as from me sitting at home, okay, okay, this is the best effort we're going to get from them. Mm-hmm. This is the best they can do here now in this moment with what they have to go with, and that's what we got. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that show last night being the best they can do right now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's not like they're without talent, right? Like they have talent to spare in, in, in you know these days. So you know what is your excuse for turning in what we did? I mean, it, it, you know, on paper we we rehash stuff, right? with uh, uh, WrestleMania rematches. Somebody thinks that's important. Hey, here's a match you saw and you completely paid for it and now it's on free TV. That means And less. it means way less. It means less. It, yeah, it means but less. At the same time, in, in fairness, I mean, those two matches that they, that Rowan and Drew and Kofi and Bryant, those were the highlights of the show. That's right. That is true. But, but again, it, it doesn't matter if you have good matches. Mm-hmm. Good matches right. are great. Sure. Yeah. But guess what? I can see good matches anywhere now. Mm-hmm. This isn't like 1998, where if you got a good match on Raw, you're like, hey, this is new and different. We literally get good matches every single week. Mm-hmm. You need matches that you care about. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, there were two jobber matches on Raw. Mm hmm. I don't even remember who who was in them. Like who was on the other end of them or the the jobbers themselves? No, who was on the other end? Mm-hmm. Like, wait, it was. Yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't. Lacey make any sense. and Lucha House Party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, but, I, I, and even you know, like we're talking about uh, in the chat, Potter saying just wait on Goldberg, Brock, and Taker to return. If that's our answer, then this oh. is this is this is if you look at Mondays and Tuesdays, it, it is just turning into a uh, nostalgia machine at this point. But by the way, um, here and now, I'm making a declaration. Mm-hmm. There's a rumor floating around that Goldberg is going to take the title from Kofi. Mm-hmm. If that happens, I will not watch Raw or SmackDown without being paid to do so. <laughs> Thank you for that distinction. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm very serious about this. Okay, because that will literally kill the entire company. This is um, I, I made a statement on on the Twitter today, and it, and it uh, I boiled down to this myself. Um, I have been a Monday Night Raw apologist for a while. Mike, you're very aware of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we do. I, we 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 go on wrap up. I tell you what was good and I'm like wow it's a different and kind I of tell show. you why you're wrong it's a different kind of show <laughs> it's a different kidding. kind of show it's a different kind of format you can only do so much but it's amazing they pull off what they do every week right and they're still one of the highest rated you know x y and z's of 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 ever uh on a weekly basis and have been for nobody has accomplished what raw has but the only thing they have not accomplished uh, uh, lately is enjoyability Mm-hmm. And I think this is this is this this is a symptom of what they've been doing. Like They're finally, it. they've ground their audience so much with the money grabbing things to to this this level. And the weird thing I, is, we're coming off a good WrestleMania. Absolutely, we're coming off a good WrestleMania where the fans literally got almost everything we want. Mm-hmm. Like we got Brock dropping the tail, we got Kofi getting the tail, we got. I know a lot of people wanted the Iconics one until we got that. We got Becky two belts. And it's almost like, okay, you got your one night. Now we get five months of whatever the fuck we want to do, which is evidently nothing. And even last night, there, like, there was a call out, I believe, by AJ of listening to the fans and da-da-da-da-da and calling that out. Like, they're very... Um... They're very self-referential about that, kind of like when they yeah. they blamed uh, uh, 
uh, Baron, Baron Corbin. Corbin for the lowest ratings in history. Like who? And are yet uh, they, they, they blame Oprah. Baron Corbin for the lowest ratings. Yet who's the first motherfucker that has a match on last night's Raw? Mm-hmm. Baron Corbin. Baron fucking Corbin. There's more of that guy. I mean, well, it's and, 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 and it's story. Up. It's story. It's story that they're blaming him because he was like quote quote unquote in charge and everything, right? Uh, so th- so there's that. But but there's also like, hey, our answer to ratings is bring everybody back that we just sent over the SmackDown and this complicated wild card thing and let's do just a bunch of matches from a few weeks ago. I'm like, sorry, Matt, 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 I think Matt, you were trying to get in here. Yeah, sorry, Matt. Uh, oh, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Nah. So many, there's so many going around. All right. Okay, okay. Um, when you get done watching Raw, you don't feel good about yourself anymore, even no. if the main event was good like it was last night. Uh, my wife had just said wrestling doesn't make me smile anymore. Oh no! Honey, honey, it's not wrestling's fault. Let's no. th- make sure. Oh yeah, no, it's not wrestling's it's, fault. This is a WWE problem. This is not a and wrestling problem. It's okay? not even a total WWE problem. No, because Two Hundred Five Live is great. Two Hundred Five Live is great. great. NXT UK. Uh, NXT UK Miz and Mrs. Is great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, hell, yeah, I, no, it's, I it's half a, enjoyed the Marine 5 the other main, night. To be fair, it's mainly a Raw problem. Half yeah. enjoyed. Right? SmackDown is mostly okay. Actually, guys, if you haven't watched Marine 5, I did, you know, you know, I'll do a review. Sorg, I, I, I watched Sorg. three Marines in a, re, in a row, and I'm going to review them later in the show. We'll get to that. Uh, oh, boy, Sorg. <laughs> Sorg. There, there's a lot wrong with the Spoiler alo- alert. Not, uh, collectively, they are not as good as, um, uh, what is the Boone one? Boone the Bounty Hunter? Boone the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. The, no, collectively, nothing is as good as Boone the Bounty Hunter. Collectively, together, and rolled in with the John Cena one, forget the Ted DiBiase Jr. one, not as good as, as Boone the Bounty Hunter. That is your spoiler alert for later in the show. But anyways. Um, no, I think, um, no, I'm with you. And that's why I want to make that distinction. Wrestling doesn't suck. Okay. No. Wrestling doesn't suck. Our Monday. The wrestlers don't suck. The wrestlers on Raw don't suck. Well. Monday couple, nights suck. A couple exceptions. Some of the wrestlers do suck. Well, yeah, yes, but generally, again, I believe, <laughs> I, I think, I think, Matt, you listed, we're talking about Becky Lynch, Kofi Kingston, um, even I will take yeah, Drew back. Like- I will take Drew McIntyre as a very good talent, not being doing very good on Raw because it's Raw. I will take Braun Strowman. I will take even Roman well, Reigns. I will take right. Seth Rollins. You know and, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, uh, yeah the revival. Like, uh, the revival problem. I, I know. I said in the article that I wasn't going to offer any solutions, but I've had twenty four hours, so I think it's a situation where they need to get back to. You know, who are our time-tested main roster guys, reliable, time-tested main roster guys, and and focus on those guys. So mm-hmm. that, you know, who's been on TV for however many – that's why Kofi worked. And I don't, I don't think that's a solution. Brian and Reigns. Um, I don't think that's a solution. I think well, the, you, you need new. These guys. You need like, new. They're calling up these guys from NXT before they're done cooking. It happened to Corbin. Now it's happening with Strowman. These guys with all this potential, they get called up. They're pushed too far, too far, too fast. They're not ready for it, and it ends up either dragging down the no, show. No, or no, 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 no. I, no, 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 I, no, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Roll back, roll back. It's not the talent's fault. It's not no, the talent's and, fault at all. Oh, it's it, the people putting the talent in position. Strowman wasn't a call up. It, it may. At some point, the talent has to accept at least part of the responsibility okay. for what's going on here. You've got to accept responsibility for your own career if you're on that roster. That's why guys ask for their releases because they want to take control of their own careers. But as long as you're going to stay into the machine, you've got a responsibility to either do the best you can with what you're given, example, the revival, or figure something out. Figure out the way to get yourself over. Um, but for some reason, some of these guys can't get it working. That's why I think you've got to, you've got to if you're WWE – and you want to turn the ship around, you've got to focus right. on the guys who have proven they can do it over the long haul. Uh, Tina is calling out that, that the, apparently, I guess this is uh, new news, um, that they did just fire the head writer on Raw. Good. Vince? No, no, no. <laughs> then they didn't fire the head writer. I was going to say, because, I mean, it, it, it all stops there. Um, but uh, interesting. I was just looking at headlines real quick on Wait. WrestleZone. The revival Scott Dawson. You'll regret all this embarrassment. I mean, it, you know, again, the Usos have been like a hardcore great tag team 
uh, you know, you have serious tag team on SmackDown, and they're now jokesters all of a sudden against mm-hmm. another very serious and very good ta- tag team. That tells me it's not up to the talent here. No, but but you know why? Because neither of them have the tag titles. Mm-hmm. But and hey, but they're finally doing something, Mike. We explained that we don't do anything with the secondaries. Yeah, but there's no story here. And by the way, some guy named Ty Cross, who has one of those uh, fan gold belts in his picture, uh, claims that uh, the revival segment was funny. Sorg, I don't think there was nothing talk- funny about that, Ty. Come on, man. <laughs> Sorg, I don't even know who that is. We shouldn't mention him in the chat room. It's probably a, it's probably a bot. He's uh, he's some guy from Rise who's a tag team champion. No, I, I, I don't. I you still don't, don't know? even know. No. Ty, I'm trying I, here, man. He's just not biting. I'm sorry about. <laughs> I, I'm worried about putting too much focus on that revival segment because it's not the real issue in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like, look, the revival were given the absolute dirt worst gig on that show, and they went out and they um, did it. I, a I think different. Okay, jump in. Someone did it. And they went out there and they did it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Come one on, at a time. come on. Let, let Matt finish. The revival went out there and they did it a thousand percent to the best of their abilities and you know at the end of the day the people who love the revival only love the revival more today because they're it's sympathy now you're like i feel bad for the revival i want the revival to to get their shot now yeah what what are you trying to say there mad mike i don't think the revival was given the worst material on that show last night who was Sami Zayn literally got thrown into a dumpster. Well, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm serious. That was a bad like, segment. Like, you have... Sami Zayn is the voice of the frustrated creative team, first of all, which is terrifying. Because Sami Zayn has been one of the worst book people on Raw mm-hmm. in the past year. Everyone remember the Lashley sisters bit? Yeah. <laughs> Guarantee that wasn't Sami's idea. Right. But... It's, <sighs> but it's working with it what what you're given. Yeah, there's working with what you're given, and then there's listening to your audience. the The main things I pointed out at WrestleMania that worked: mm-hmm. trophy, mm-hmm. accident. Mm-hmm. It was an accident because Ali got injured. Mm-hmm. Kofi was never supposed to be anywhere near the WWE title match. Becky got over by herself. She was never supposed to be any part of that uh, main roster picture with Ronda and Charlotte. She got herself over, and they listened because we just kept cheering for it and wouldn't stop until they acknowledged it. Right. Seth Rollins, also not supposed to be there. It was supposed to be Roman. Roman was supposed to leave WrestleMania with the title, but he had the bout with leukemia and everything. And the Iconics, like, they were a joke tag team six months ago, but they were funny. Mm-hmm. They got themselves over. Mm-hmm. This you you've just made my argument for me, Mike, that the, I know, that the talent but, bears part of this. Uh, but you're saying the tried and true people. I don't think that's right. The I, think they can do it. I think you need tried and new mm. because. No one is good. They just aired you, a five-minute Roman Reigns package on why you should cheer Roman Reigns again. We don't fucking care. Mm-hmm. We know why. Like, they recapped Roman's entire career when we just had months of recapping Roman's entire career. Mm-hmm. Like, we fucking get it. Hey, have you, you heard of this Roman Have you heard of this Roman Reigns kid? Exactly. Like, Who we, did he ever beat? Like, that's like saying, hey, we should air a vignette for John Cena. Yeah. Like, who, who is this guy? Who, who is this guy from the Bumblebee movie? Yeah. Well, I, we got plenty more to talk about with uh, Raw. We got uh, uh, Ronnie's got something for us here in a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, well, hey, you know, like I said, we're, we're mad about Mondays, but you don't have to be mad about uh, pro wrestling in general. We are doing a lot of fun stuff and trying to be, do our part at indie wrestling at that US 
to I love that I'm I, I'm still I'm noticing myself wearing this vest during this promo and it feels very very weird, uh, <laughs> or or very very right. I haven't entirely decided, Ronnie. Is you this love how you, it. you love? Is it. this how you feel all the time? Oh, like yeah. it, it, it is kind of like give you a story. So like if I start like just pointing people and telling them to stop through the window out here, I think they might. Oh, they will. Is that part of it? I mean, do you just do that before or after shows or just like on your days off? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I walk around the streets of Pittsburgh, and I'm like, stop! And I mean, we like, do oh, know, shit. we do know, if you you shoot a video like in your bed, you're wearing head to toe full PPE. <laughs> I really was <laughs> <laughs> telling us that we should re- we should stay home. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah, who hasn't? That, right? That's not fun. That's that's not that's not a fun journey to wear no, full no. PPE. No, yes. <laughs> no, I'm. Like, so I'm an engineer, I used to do that shit. As I said, we are uh, doing our part here at IndieWrestling.us to bring you wrestling, and uh, I think it's time for us to bring you wrestling live here. Uh, we are uh, debuting our Indie Wrestling Live um, um, promotion with Angel Gate Wrestling coming up here. Oh, no, why not, a, not that? That's a spoiler. Uh, sorry. Uh, the audio doesn't know. But Angel An- Gate is not a violation. A- no, Angel Gate is not a violation, but uh, Angel Gate Wrestling is coming to live to iPay-Per-View uh, coming up here uh, on May 25th as part of our iPay-Per-View situation here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, our lady friends over there are kicking off with the eye pay-per-view. That's, uh, May 25th at 7 p.m. If you can't be in McKeesport, PA, to catch the action live, this is your chance to see Ray Lynn, Christina Marie, Queen Amanada, who just appeared on SmackDown last week, a lady for us who appeared on Raw a bit ago, uh, uh, Ronnie Nicole, Casey Spinelli, and more. Follow Angel Gate on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Angel Gate, P- Angel Gate PWX on the Twitter for more details. Uh, you can also follow and find out more information as we release it here at IndieWrestling.us. There'll be a purchase link coming up very soon. Go check that out and check out the past episodes of the program over on uh, IndieWrestling.us and over also on the uh, Pro Wrestling Network, PWNNetwork.com. So very excited to be uh, bringing them to iPay-Per-View here and uh, other promotions we are working on uh in the future unfortunately it's internet pending depending on venues but uh, other than that we are getting there um <laughs> i just saw shirley doe says he needs called in for episode 666 we already have some plans with gory but i mean we should just just invite everybody uh <laughs> that applies for we just we just have a spooky wrestler hangout uh, what's the reaper doing that week who knows i think we can uh ask him we gotta ask him. Yeah, wait, wait, we'll we'll put that out there. I got super pumped because you're like, you're gonna come in this week. I'm like, I'm gonna be on six six six. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I did the math wrong. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're the precursor to it. Oh. All righty, I just say as as we kind of tease there for the visually for you guys, it is you know OSHA week here. You're here, mm-hmm. and uh, you watch Raw, and I understand you may have to issue some violations. It sounds like the rest of the crew has at this point as a whole, but uh, you specifically. We're looking out for some violations while you're watching Raw. All right. I'm going to need you to uh, run the card down for me, and then I'll violate it that way. Run the card down? Oh, is that prepared well, let, for let's this? Start, no, let's, let's start with the uh, the first promo, how terrible that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, this I was mean, Vince McMahon and everybody coming in. Uh, it and made no sense. SmackDown and everything, that, right? That was a waste of a good 25, 30 minutes. It was, like, it was about 25, 30 minutes. And yeah, it went through a commercial break. Uh, uh, well... From the way Jesus. I watched it, there were no commercial breaks, which we need to talk about that, too. That's a, just a violation in its own right. Hold on. We got, we got a violation. We got a graphic for you right. here. We got a graphic violation right there. <laughs> Be prepared for this. That's right. That's right. Uh, all right. So uh, let's let's start. Before we start with the promo, let's start with the fact that when I watched it this afternoon on demand on mm-hmm. Comcast, uh, there was a whole hour taken on the show. You want to know why there was a whole hour taken on the show? Because that whole hour was nothing but commercials. And edited out every single one of them goddamn commercials. So really, Raw was only two hours long. And uh, what was the reason for that? That was... Uh, that was uh, Matt, I think you, you spelled this out a little bit before, right? Oh, well, there was a, um, a mention from... Uh, uh, I think his name is Glenn Rubenstein on Twitter. That um, they were noticing that the... No. That the commercial breaks were longer and raw that might be this is a very realistic possibility that they had to do make goods for some of their advertisers from last week 
uh, because the ratings uh, were so uh, were as low as they were that they had to bring them back this week to uh, yeah to do a make good. Um, that happens sometimes when you don't meet your uh, your ever your ratings goals so, for advertising. Well, if they put on a better show, maybe they'd reach their ratings goals. Mm, maybe. Mm. Anyway, let's uh, let's continue on. Thank you for that insight, my friend. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, so let's talk about how bad the promo was and how Vince pretty much rambled on and repeated himself like what, like probably like four or five times. Mm-hmm. The stars from SmackDown are going on SmackDown. And I was just like, oh, okay, Vince. Uh, yeah, no shit. He's confused too because everybody's been back the back and forth already so so much. What, why even and, do the superstar shakeup when you're just going to throw everybody in the same shows anyway? Yeah, yeah. or or the fact that the shakeup well, lasted two weeks to begin with. Oh, guess look who's over here now. And uh, yeah. why even have separate brands if there's no one running each individual brand? Like, let's start with that basically because the whole point of the brand split is that Raw and SmackDown are competing with each other based on the rosters that the individual general general managers put together Mm -hmm. if there are no more general managers the brand split does not need to exist no Mm -hmm. it doesn't at all it's it's so stupid and then uh then the Sami Zayn promo i love Sami Zayn. Mm -hmm. uh they literally literally buried Sami Zayn. like that was just the dumbest fucking thing i've ever seen they gave him the uh super shutter treatment yeah (laughs) Yeah. at the dumpster into the back of a garbage truck We did the same gag last night, too. No, it's still funny. I watched it last night. <laughs> <laughs> if someone was smart, later, like, at like right at, right before Raw ended, they would have panned back to that garbage truck, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you just see, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he'll you be back for the sequel. You see the hand, like, crawling out. And, ne- and next week, Sammy comes out in a mask, because he's disfigured Sami Zayn. Super Sammy. Ooh. Super Sammy. I wonder if they can get uh, Kevin Nash to play Super Sammy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> or, you know, maybe he could wear a mask that's a little more generic. <laughs> mm. Oh, bring back El Generico. I can get it. No, I don't know who that is. I'm just saying a, a mask that's a little more generic, you know. Well, I heard that he died in a fire when he was saving those orphans. Is that true? <laughs> Probably. Probably true. Oh god! Oh, you know, in the matches on Raw, except for the uh, the Lucha, or, or, I almost said Lucha Underground. Jesus Christ! Uh, the, the Lucha, Lucha yeah, the Lucha House Party. That was just pointless. Right, the Lucha House Party need jobbers no, at this point. No, you know, real competition. I mean, is there? We, we already treat so many tag teams so poorly. Why, you know, to get they be like, oh man. We've been just shitting on Lucha House Party. Let's give them these two jabokes. It was so stupid. And then uh, another thing that bugged the shit out of me was uh, Samoa Joe having a uh, conversation with Rey Mysterio's son, uh, which this either needs to end in two ways. Mm -hmm. Rey Mysterio's son wrestles Mm -hmm. and wins the United States title from Samoa Joe. (laughs) Because where the hell else are you going to go with it? Or Rey Mysterio's son turns on his father and takes Samoa Joe as his protege. There, there is a Whoa. there is a third way. There is a third way. Okay. Samoa Joe just beats the shit out of Dominic, <laughs> and I'm okay with that too. Like, yeah, like or just... honestly, the Samoa Joe Dominic thing was really the only thing I thought furthered storylines on Raw. And, and I'm waiting to hear Samoa Joe say that he's Dominic's real father. Like Eddie, Eddie <laughs> no, and there's Dominic's a ladder match. Fa- and, yeah. No, you know who Dominic's real father is, and I finally figured this out now that I've seen the kid grown up. It's fucking Walter. Well, first, <laughs> Walter's the fucking man. <laughs> look at him. No, look at him. He looks like if Walter and Vicky Guerrero had a baby. It's true. Oh, God. No, no, that's just permanently burned into my head. You are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, other, than, other than those things, the other matches were fine. Kofi was a good match with Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the hell? Oh, uh, Roman Reigns and uh, what Drew McIntyre. That was a good match. Uh, the uh, the random tag match at the beginning of the show was just pointless. Well, was, I, you know, I get it. AJ walks out on him, you know, because he wants the belt. He doesn't care about uh, Mullins. Like, if you're going to have AJ be a heel, put him with his friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put him with Gallows and Anderson. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like just, just redo the... 
just redo the club. And the whole story is Seth was in a three man team and guess what? Now he's not. Now he has to know what it's like to be on the other side of that. Yeah. Like that took me two seconds to write. It's not hard. <laughs> Hell, you can even have them come out to the shield music. Mm-hmm. It'd be funny. It'd be the good kind of comedy that they want to do. Like, Imagine, imagine the club pretending to be the Shield. Well, I know a good thing about uh, wrestling comedy, so uh, I completely agree. In the fashions, <laughs> but uh, yeah, those were my only complaints about Raw. Everything else was fine. Mm-hmm. It's just the little things I thought were stupid. <laughs> um, so you didn't have a problem with having only one women's segment that only lasted five minutes? Oh, yeah, I forgot about the women's segment. No, yeah, yeah, Exactly. That was Everyone forgot about the women's <laughs> segment because it barely happened. Uh, yeah, I forgot about it. I so. had to go back and watch it because I, like, I felt like like it was Matt and maybe another person saying, well, the Becky Lynch thing was really good. And just like, and, wait, what did they do? do you do? know what happened? I liked on, it, yeah. Do you know what happened exclusively on .com? Hmm. The Iconics came out. Hmm. And they talked trash about Cincinnati. The good stuff happens. Really, you don't it need to watch. nice to see them. You know yeah. who else came out? Mojo, Mojo Raleigh. Raleigh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was terrible. Mojo Raleigh with his with his weird Luna Vachon eye. What? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, that's oh yeah, turn. it's like uh, it's like broken glass on his eye. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. He, his personality is broken, is what he's going with. He's Wait. basically stealing my E-Fed gimmick from 2008. <laughs> is he going? That's like that's, a, that's that's a shoot. Is he is he Cody Rhodes? Broken Cody Rhodes? He's only smoking mirrors, man. Mm-hmm. Whoa, Whoa. You are only smoking mirrors. All right. Here comes Cody Rhodes. And you know what the main problem is on Raw right now? What's besides, besides, the, besides the writing. The main problem? Three the, hours? The main pro- no, the main problem. Too many Popeye's that- chicken commercials? No. <laughs> what, what do I no, because we love chicken. that chicken from about. Popeye's. <laughs> um, the works. main problem is that none of the main heels on Raw are believable. Hmm. None of them. Like, the main heels on Raw right now, Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, they all have gotten the shit kicked out of them by some form of the shield since last July. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't the shield, it was Kurt Angle. Like, they've gotten their shit handed to them. And because Brock had the universal title, they were never able to obtain anything. And no, I don't count the the Lashley Intercontinental title reign because that had Leo Rush all over it and it was just pointless. They would have better just given Leo Rush the Intercontinental title at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would have been. Um, but like that's the main problem is that you like they had to bring over AJ Styles and turn him heel to give Seth any kind of credible challenger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not good. Like in the SmackDown division tonight, I told you before the show started. Me- Jeff Hardy had to, you know, he got injured, so they had to relinquish the tag team titles, right? So Shane said he was going to crown new tag t- to new tag champions on SmackDown. There are no good face tag teams on SmackDown or heel tag teams for that matter that they could give the belts to. They had to fabricate a team in Daniel Bryan and Rowan. So they actually win the titles? Yes. Okay. And like Shane was just going to hand them the belts. You'd think maybe someone like Heavy Machinery would be like, hey, that's not very fair. We're here on SmackDown. We're a tag team. We could do this. Or literally anyone else like the b team or nakamura and rusev or anyone Mm -hmm. do you know who comes out to defend the honor of the smackdown tag team titles raw superstars the usos that makes no sense but okay it makes absolutely no sense because they're not going to give the smackdown titles to a raw tag team i don't care how wild your card is Mm, okay get it i get it i get it but like, there's nothing goes over my have... head because I will catch it. Exactly. <laughs> they have they have so much talent. They have so much talent. It's just they don't know how to use anyone anymore. Hmm. They don't know how to use anybody anymore because they're all clueless. They're legit 
all clueless in the office. And the writing team is just terrible. They don't know what they're doing. Well, on that note, uh, they're calling out in the chat room a little bit. Um, so Tina saying uh, uh, was was talking about Leo. Um, there's another tangent there. So basically, uh, uh. so what, what's going on with Leo? Did he get himself <laughs> in trouble again? He probably did. He just disappeared. Uh, yeah, the, the the dirt sheets say that he uh, he's run into a little bit of trouble in the uh, in the locker room. Mm. Oh, I heard he got thrown thrown out of the locker room. And he uh, went on like uh, Twitter. Rant. Yeah. So. He went on a Twitter rant about it too. Oh jeez. Honestly, this guy should have been fired as soon as he made fun of Emma for getting let go. Mm-hmm. He should have been fired then. Because he clearly does not have the right attitude, and he's very talented in the ring. But <laughs> hey, well, let me defend because yeah. there's a little bit of like, how, why do you, how do you keep watching this stuff? You know, part of the casual fan audience that has stopped tuning in, and I and I get you, and it, it's getting very hard to do so. It is a little bit out of habit. It is a little bit out of you know. I want to see what is happening with one people that you know we've watched kind of come up and seeing them on the main show and what what's happening with them. And it is a little bit of uh, probably. I, I would say nostalgia a little bit on our on our cases, right? And it's also hope. Like we <laughs> want it hope. to be better. Yeah, I mean we are. I mean, whether no matter how much we dislike or just like, ugh, Raw well, wasn't that great. And to be you know frank, it's not like we're all just sitting there watching with our eyes glued to it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mad it's, Mike it's is. It's not like we're paying for yeah. Raw every week. Ma- yeah, like we're if, we're, if we're paying for Raw every week, I wouldn't. Mad Mike is is building Legos. I'm working on promotion for whatever I filmed for you guys <laughs> out there, uh, Hirani. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to be honest, and in that is still a place where wrestling fans gather, love, hate, or indifferent on Monday nights. I mm-hmm. mean, that's why I'm there. I'm there for the other people, uh, not to they just incidentally we're watching Raw while it's happening. Um, so I, I, I want to yeah, for, for me, it's really, um, go ahead, Matt. Matt. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that. Like for me, it's a lot of it has to do with just uh, you know Monday night, just the inertia of watching wrestling every Monday night. You know, you can't really stop after a while. Uh, definitely hope because once you've seen wrestling, especially WWE wrestling, and it's like maximum awesomeness, mm-hmm. you like want that drug again. Yeah. But and another thing is is my wife. You know, my wife watches likes to watch wrestling i like to watch wrestling it's something we can do together mm. which may sound like the worst you know way to build a stronger marriage but it works for us so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's something we could share and Hope. talk about and then she can cry on my shoulders because the revival lost again <laughs> and, um, I, and and raw is really one of the only things that's still kind of appointment viewing yeah there's nothing left for me anyway like yeah it's it, like raw and game of thrones Mm-hmm. Those are the only things I feel like the need to watch as it's happening. And nothing is as, cons- as consistent as this program, too. Like, if you're a, let's say, a Steeler fan, like, great, you have 11 weeks of the year, right? That you all get mm-hmm. to watch something together. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think that makes a difference, too. So, uh, Tina's usually on the train home when Raw is on. <laughs> that sounds so, great. There you go. Um, but, uh, yeah. Interesting. So on that note, uh, we'll talk a little bit about wrestling. Let's, let's try to get a little bit away from uh, Monday nights, at least. I, there is a lot of great stuff going on out there. And I, I want to, you know, I've been trying to make a shift. And it was just so bad. We kind of had to talk about it this week, of course. But in the meantime, one thing that I look forward to every Tuesday is our friends at Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza here in Beachview. Over in Carnegie, PA, the East End and PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You can check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and see what you're missing there in the visual ways. They got great social media. And also the um, unknown secret campaign that we're running for them. If you got a Broadway in your play, in your, in wherever you live, wherever you commute, wherever that may be. And, uh, and you don't have a slice there because they are here in Pittsburgh, but they have expanded the four location since we started uh supporting them here on this show and them with us uh take a picture of the of the broadway avenue in whatever town you may be in and tweet them pgh underscore slice on the twitter tag them on facebook uh tag them on your instagrams as well and uh let them know that you want to slice on your broadway uh do that help their global expansion because that's what we need to do now uh and uh and, and and help expand that Maybe maybe you'll ha- be able to eat it on your Monday nights to help soothe <laughs> the uh, scalding 
uh, indifference you have towards Monday Night Raw. Um, let's see. Uh, Tina Keys is calling out until Slace has a branch out here at T-Mobile Park or delivered by Boeing Jet. Not impressed. There you go. It's called out. I think that was a good call out for our sponsor there. Get out there in the Northwest. All right, guys. Yeah. I think there's a dearth of decent pizza in, in the in the West in general. I'm not impro- impressed by your California kitchen uh, pizza kitchen. <laughs> Anyways, so okay. out there they just call it pizza kitchen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, wait, no, I'm trying to close the show. No, hey, we're gonna hit up uh, this. We're gonna have the big question after this message. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Yes. All right, all right, all right. We are just munching away here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, especially when Ronnie starts. Wait, did, you, did she give you all the pizza? What? I can't. You know, I'm going to die, and she hands me two pizzas. Yeah, what is like, going what the on? shit? <laughs> I'll die for the Mayhem Show here. Oh, no, Jeez. Spoiler. Hey, you're looking good, though. Well, you Thanks, just had Mike. to buy a new pack of uh, safety vests. I did. I went because with a uh, size large. Size large, man. Yeah. I'm down to 220 pounds. There you go. There you go. The uh, more fit Ronnie Starks of the Tag Team Ocean Inc. Mm-hmm. That's right. Also, Trios. Trios, yeah. You've been getting in the ring lately. Yeah, yeah. I have been. There was a. There was actually, you, you had a safety moment where it was good you were wearing a hard hat this weekend. Yeah, he definitely hit me in the head with that, uh, with that cone. Yeah. <laughs> You see that evil look I gave him after he hit me in the head with a cone? Yeah, there was a little bit like you motherfucker. Yeah, I, I was pretty pissed. But you then were, I laughed. You, he was he was stepping through the ropes and and they were tossing like full size cones mm-hmm. upgraded this time uh, into the ring and one did not entirely make it into the ring. It well, was, it just straight up hit me in the side of the head. <laughs> I just looked at Dan and I'm like, hey, you fucker. Yeah, but I love him. I love you. Hard head falls off and <laughs> and the crowd just goes, ooh. Because <laughs> they see when I can go from like zero to like sixty in like two seconds, yeah. I'm just like. <laughs> also, a violation. <laughs> no, it was. I didn't print enough violations for Sunday, or I would have gave Dan a violation. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um. Anyways, it is time for the big question. We got Mad Mike, Mainstream Mad, and all the mayhemers out in the chat room, including, including Tina. Ty, Dan, and Alex, and so many more out there. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, but anyways, uh, it is time for that big question. And I, I teased earlier, I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the Marine movie series because I watched a lot of them uh, this week. And uh, it got me thinking, you know, I think it's time for, and I'm sure this is a question we've had in the past in our you know, 13 years of doing this. But uh, at this point, who do you think is deserving of being a part of, of a WWE films project. Ocean Inc. Okay, Ocean Inc. <laughs> well, there's that. Um, anyways, uh, but so so, what do you uh, what what do you guys think? Who would like to go first? Who would you like to see featured in a film? And 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 as a bonus part, do you have an idea what kind of film you'd like to see? Baron uh, Corbin yeah. in a buddy comedy. Baron God. Corbin in a buddy Wait, comedy with who? Yeah, with, with who? who? Oh, jeez. Um. Drew back there. <laughs> oh my god! Might that, as well. Yeah, that'd be perfect. I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you an option, Drake Maverick. Mm. That'd be funny. All you hear is, "Let me tell you about my best friend." <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! I like that. I like that, Mike. I think you're about to say one. Oh boy. Um. So Sorg. Mm-hmm. Um. Do you know how how the big thing in Hollywood these days is remakes and reboots? Yeah. And boot makes and all that stuff, boot right? Makes. Yeah, it, it's a thing. Probably, I don't know. I read in Variety. I didn't. Okay. I don't read Variety. Anyway, um, I think we should. I think we should remake Crocodile Dundee. Oh no, no. Starring no, no. Hold on, hold on. You don't know where I'm going with this. I mean, starring. The Australian Nightmare, Bobby Rue. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna say Nathan Jones? No, no like, Robert ah. Robert Rude. <laughs> Robert Rude is he has heard the legend of Crocodile Dundee, and he's admired him all of his life. So Robert Rude, an American, 
slash Canadian travels to Australia where he is met by a lovely pair of tour guides who are iconic. That's it. How long have you been playing in this movie? I literally just thought of it now. Liar. I'll be real. No, I swear to hand to God. Literally just thought of it now. (laughs) Well, the Bobby Roo joke has been a joke for years. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. boy. Um, I don't know because, why they Because in with... TNA, Christy Hemi always announced him as Bobby Roo, and she never got the duh out. Yeah, this is a big thing so... on Botchamania for a while. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan. I enjoyed it. What about you, Mainstream Matt? You got one? I will, uh, since we're all doubling up, uh, man, and as badly as I wanted to try to reboot Cagney and Lacey, I'm going to go a safer <laughs> route. And uh, we're going to go. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I want to go down this. Who would you have in a reboot? <laughs> Who's your right. reboot of Cagney and Lacey? Is it right, the Alexa Iconics? Bliss would definitely be one of them. Okay. Okay, Alexa uh, Bliss. Who's going to be? You know what? Let's have. Gosh, I'm going to offend someone's sensibilities if I go with someone else here. Who else should we have be the. Uh, I'm trying to think of another standout who hasn't been in a movie yet. I know Becky's been in a movie, so I can't pick her. I hate to cut you off, but you don't know offensive what? until you heard about what we were talking about the other day at uh, at dinner. Oh, uh, well, w- well, would Alexa it... be Cagney or Lacey? Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Okay, okay um, but, but you had another one? Uh, yeah, I want to see uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in a movie where either, or, uh, uh, just for the sake of accuracy, um, where in which Sammy is getting married, Kevin is the well-intending best man who causes nothing but trouble. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, um, I would like to oh, see. Boy. I would like to see um, Elias, and I'm going to go with Alexa Bliss in yet another remake of A Star Is Born. Uh, Sorg, Sorg, Sorg. Um, I, I have a corollary to your to your movie pitch. Mm-hmm. Um. On a WWE house show, Elias mm-hmm. actually sang mm-hmm. "Sha la 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 lows" mm-hmm. with one Finn Balor. Yes, he did. I yes, think he that's did. A, that's a better movie. Uh... That's a be- a star is Balorn. Oh no! Can we have a remake yeah. of Train Spotting with Finn Balor? <laughs> All right. Wow. Uh, well, a remake of Train Spotting <laughs> with Finn Balor, Wade Barrett, Drew McIntyre. And Pete Dunn. You're not gonna understand anything that's going on there. Nope. <laughs> not even a little. Not even uh, a little bit. Are you ready for Train Spotting Three? I'm sure they did a second one. Uh, <laughs> straight to DVD. Um, all right. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, from the chat room, uh, we do have. Uh, we do have uh, uh, this Thai fellow uh, says Bret Hart WWE should have made a Lonesome <laughs> Dove movie. They really mm. probably should. I remember watching that Lonesome Dove shit. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, can we bring back um, uh, Nash Bridges with Stone Cold Steve Austin as a movie? Yeah. There you go. All right. I have a question. If we were to do Ready to Rumble 2, <gasps> okay, Ready to Rumble 2, who would be the actor you'd want to play as an aging WWE legend? Can we just make a Kurt Angle? No, no, it has to be an actor. Because, it has to be an actor because, portraying. Um, because, because Oliver Platt was an actor. Oliver Platt was an actor. He played Jimmy yeah. King. Yeah, he played Jimmy King. By the way, Destin Vane, or no, it was a Dan. No, it's Destin that does the I Will Rule You yeah. uh, during yeah. their matches. Excellent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, that movie needs to come in on Blu-ray. I don't understand why it hasn't yet. What? Really? Ready to it rumble. hasn't? No. We at least got like No Holds Barred as a DVD release not too ma- too long ago. Really? Yeah, I love Ready to Rumble. Everything about that movie is fantastic. Ready to Rumble is great. Yeah. Um, Ty Cross is going uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. I, yeah, I can wow. see that. Yeah. Um, also, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Willem Dafoe. I can get behind Willem Dafoe. Can also, can I also uh, side note Vincent D'Onofrio in a The Wrestler too? Ooh. Hmm? Yeah. Maybe. Mm, just follow a different guy. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So. A different angle on it. I don't know who the Melissa Tomei would be on that one. Sorky. Hmm. I think I know who I want for the other half of my Cagney and Lacey rebates. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is what yes. I've been waiting for. I've been trying to stall for it. Um, Zelina Vega. Oh. oh. Well, she's been in a movie. Cagney and Lacey. She's been in a movie. Wait, what's she been in? 
Oh, you're uh, right. Fighting, the page fighting with doing. my family. Fighting with my family. Oh, that's right. <laughs> she did the really good Back AJ Lee impersonation. Yeah. She did an amazing AJ Lee uh, impression there. I, you know, I can I can I? She was not featured as her. Like nowhere have we mentioned that that was her, right? Mm-hmm. Can, I've mentioned it. Can we? Yeah, no. Okay. I did, WWE. I did the whole story about WWE it. doesn't say and featuring, right? Um, well, they did. They did well, a bit about it. On did they? Okay. All right. But I would I would give you a part pass on that one. Okay. For right, just fair. because I really want to see her and Katie and Lacey. Uh, okay. So I but, see no violations. I, I thought I no thought violations. you were gonna go. Matt, I thought you were going Dana Brooke for a second. Ah, nobody wants that. Hey, Dana <laughs> Brooke is a treasure. Mm-hmm. Dana no, Brooke is a goddamn treasure. I was feeling, I was feeling that. I was feeling some Dana Brooke too. <laughs> um, so uh, let us know. Uh, hit us up on the tweets at Mayhem Show or uh, wherever you may hit us up or GoodTimesWrestlingMayhemShow dot com or whatnot, and uh, let us know who would you like featured as a uh, featured wrestler in WWE film that has not received one yet. Oh, Tommaso Ciampa, Bad Santa 3. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, my God. That just Jeez. came to me. I don't know why that just came to me. but that just Our friends, me. Occupy Pro Wrestling. Hey, Pro Wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to t- look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast. That brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro, Re- Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting these smart back in smart work. Please go check them out at OccupyProWrestling.com. Great merch over there. We featured it, the Smart Cat, and uh, so much more. Great. Uh, we, got, we still got some swag that we're uh, sticking on things here in the Pittsburgh area. Thank you to our friends at OccupyProWrestling.com. All right, guys. So I don't know why. I just like, I feel like I, I'm partially obligated. I need to watch WWE films. Um,. Pray for me. Uh, so, so I, I, oh, I, sure? I grabbed watch the good ones. Yeah, well, there's that. Uh, so I, we happened to our local um, uh, use um, video game and everything store, uh, the exchange here in Pittsburgh. Gotta and love we, the exchange. We happen to be there. Oh, it's great. I just pop in there all the time. I picked up a copy of the Marine and See No Evil last time I was there for a couple bucks. This time I was looking for Marine movies. Since the newer one came out, I want to catch up. So I picked up the Marine 3. Um, Homefront, I believe it was, and her, Marine, Marine t- uh, 4, uh, which I believe was Moving Target, that one featuring Summer Ray, and I grabbed from my library Home uh, Battle uh, blah, 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 Marine 5 Battleground. All right. First of all, I'm watching Marine 3, and I'm trying to figure out if I've seen this movie before or a movie very, very, very similar to it. <laughs> <laughs> What was the similar movie? This I don't know. No, it actually, I did see Marine Three. I actually got it from the library a while ago and forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well played. Yeah, you know, it's got that guy that's the bad guy in every movie um, that plays um, what was his name, Dark or whatever in uh, in the uh, DC uh, Arrowverse stuff. Um, oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, he's good. Yeah. I oh like no, he's a, he, uh, every time I see a movie with him as a bad guy, he's in Sonic in. the Hedgehog. Dam- Damian Dark. Yeah, he is in Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, Damian, yeah, Dark. Damian Dark. Yeah. Um, Neil. Neil Donahue. He was also the no, bi- Neil- also another wrestling connection. He was the bad guy in Walking Tall with the Rock. Was he really? Yeah. He's a really good actor. He is a very good actor. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he was in this one, and it was like some weird plan about we're really mad that uh, veterans aren't getting take out, taken care of, people are getting rich, and we're going to blow up Seattle. Because <laughs> Sorry, Tina. Also, very noticeable that all of these <laughs> movies very obviously take place in the Northwest. Mm-hmm. You can kind of tell by the terrain. That's probably because they oh. film in Vancouver. Yeah, I was just about to say. There you go. <laughs> That's, well, there the you go. The cheapest place to film. The cheapest place to yeah, film the ever. Um, Gotta love the Coove. The second movie. Um, the second movie involved. Um, uh, uh, they they were. Uh, um, he's now not a marine on leave, as in the, in the first third movie. Whatever. But it's it's kind of the Ms. Ms. Reen one, and this is the Ms. Reen two. <laughs> It's really does nobody called it that in the second. Yeah, one, I love that Bush song. He's now in the private sector. The DOJ has handed over a witness, and uh, not that you could tell any of these from this from the premi- the previews. Um, and there's like a a paramilitary group that's uh, trying to kill her because she has information on somebody important. I don't know. Um, I don't know. They 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 they, they clean up the end of it with just a bunch of stock footage. So they, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, you know, again, it takes place in the woods. Summer Ray is there. <laughs> <laughs> that's She's there. The that's good. 
Is that the one with the Mistourage in it? No, 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 no. I'm getting to that. That one, that one, that one. I have a lot of fond thoughts on. Uh, Summer Rae is there, just like being handed guns <laughs> of the paramilitary group. And what, As you do. See, I thought on the previews like she would have a bigger role. Like maybe she's helping out the Miz, or maybe she's like kind of the head of the group or something. There's a point where they're having the initial ambush, and you see her pop up from under a, um, you know, she was under a, a you know, one of those uh, uh, leafy blanket things. I'm sorry. Any military people will probably be yelling at me right now. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, here she comes. And then you don't see her for another minute until she's just fall backing up these guys later. I'm just like, wait, why did we even reveal her at this point? Like some weird, poorly edited stuff. But anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, I'm sorry. My iPad just died. Um, it didn't like this either. Um, it was fine. It was better than the than the other one, uh, so the the progression is getting better as you go through the Marine movies. Uh, still, the Marine one where uh, John Cena is damn near inflammable, it, it, you can't beat that. Plus, that had um, Terminator T one thousand in it. Don't don't ask me. I didn't watch any of those damn movies. You should have watched them. I'm good. Just thanks. for just for personal enjoyment. I mean, uh, the personal enjoyment. The fifth one, or as I have are now am calling it, Ms. Ms. Misereen uh, number three um, is <laughs> is the one the one with the B team the Miztourage and that's where they like you saw him in the movie and that 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 became a part of it right Put me out of my misery um, they're part of a biker gang he is now a <laughs> paramedic first day on the job the right. Miz the Miz mm-hmm. is now a paramedic he's and, a biker okay he, no 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 oh. he's not no 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 the, the, okay the Miz is an ambulance driver mm-hmm. first day on the job former Marine. All tracks. He's overqualified. That's right. That means he's way, 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 way overqualified to be an EMT worker. Why would he settle for that job? I don't know. He's um, a- depending on what kind of marine is, he might be way, way not qualified to be an EMT. That, that was the other thing. Like, wait, was he a medic in the Marines? Because yeah, he's like, killing a lot of fucking people here. Otherwise, he'd have to get a lot of certifications, and I don't think there's been a movie that proves that he did that no not so far no not so far uh but anyways hey, Jim, uh, you need to you need to hold on. in the chat room he's talking crap about billy k we don't take kind to that in this mayhem track no room. we don't no we do not billy k is the fucking charger you gotta be joking without me. billy k does he know they would just be the iconic if you gotta that... be joking me you gotta be joking me <laughs> would you go to journalism for that <laughs> tina who is Madness. is a military person says uh camo tarp is what we're going for I, I was going to correct you because i also knew a military person but i was just gonna let it slide they call that the camo tarp surprise story. the camo tarp surprise <laughs> <laughs> the fifth one the, somebody shoots somebody it, shoots up a sword would call it the leafy tent experience <laughs> Sounds like a really bad porno, the Leafy Ted experience. Uh, I'm starting to see indie promotions putting together tag teams and putting experience after their names. I'm like, can we yep. not do that part, please? Oh, no, we please have to play that. out. Oh, it's so bad. Like, we are officially it's the so OSHA bad. experience. Are you now? Yeah. Please do. <laughs> the Lanky Bike Guy experience. Oh. Anyways, back to it. Uh, yes, in this one, um, a, a biker bar gets shot up, so now the bikers are just tearing through the city trying to find them. Uh, the EMTs get locked, uh, get into a parking garage and find them, find the, uh, the, 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 the shooters that the biker gang is after. Turns out there's a good reason that they're shot them, uh, maybe, kind of, sort of. Um, and, it, and most of it takes place in a, in a parking garage where they're being stalked. And the biker gang consists of Naomi, um... Um, the B team, uh, uh, Curtis and Bo Dallas and he Slater amongst other yes. biker looking fellows. Now I got to give props. Bo Dallas is pretty much the main bad guy in this. Excellent. Bo Dallas. If you please watch the fifth one. So, so did he make you believe in himself? He made me believe that he was a biker and he's the one that kind of revealed the other subplot going on. On top of things. If I take my time tomorrow and watch this movie, do you need a review for me? <laughs> Just give me a violation or no violation. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I actually, I want a written review. You want a written review? I'll, I'll give want, you I a written, written review. review. <laughs> I, want, I want a score out of 10 stars. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, 
more urban this time, but again, it's like mostly happens at a, a in a, in a parking garage that apparently is attached to an amusement park, mm-hmm. where of course the finale happens. As you do, did yes. they blow up the amusement park? It was not as interesting as the end of Shazam. I'll tell you that. Shazam was a good movie. Shazam was a very oh. good movie. All right. Um. So Sorg, if you're on this WWE movie kick. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you another triple feature. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, and just, again, collectively, as you, if you can't tell by my review, none together or individually as good as Boone the Bounty Hunter. That mm-hmm. was terrible. What? <laughs> Boone the Bounty Hunter. It you, was the greatest. You, I bought two copies. Violation on wait, you, Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. <laughs> a violation on you. There you go. <laughs> I'm like trying you to point no exactly at it. Certified. There you go. I'm a scientist. <laughs> yes. So anyways, I got to turn the violation off. Uh, I need a sound effect to go with it for sure. Because <laughs> it just kind of you just like, it says nothing the, for the audio podcast. You just need you me to do vi- an audio uh, saying violation. Yeah, just like violation. <laughs> or yeah. just or just like a, a sound that's like a slap on the screen. Where's like the whistle? <laughs> yeah, whistle. Yeah, we did the whistle. Thank you for not bringing the whistle, by the way. It's in the car. It's in the car. It, yeah. Like that would, I don't know. They would just nobody would listen to this. I may have been taken my gimmick bag out of the car on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> gimmick bag. I mean, you know, you never know when your car is broken down and you just need to stay out on the road, get all my cones out, out and just run like, like at some point, like we need to do something where you just like get the get up, get the get up up and just start directing cars. It's a good idea. <laughs> I could literally stand there and tell the, uh, the say, se- what the fuck has that been called? What? The taco stand? No. Yeah. The guys the in the taco tea? stand. Your tea, yes. Yes. My brain stopped working there for a second. Sure. Stay there just like this, like no tea. <laughs> You don't let it go. Road's and closed. then he got hit by a train. And that's what. Um, yes. Okay. What is your triple feature? You say your, your, triple, your triple feature. You need to watch, and these are all in ascending quality. Ascending okay? quality. Okay. Ascending quality. One. Leprechaun Origins. Oh okay, my god. I've not seen it. Yes, I've seen it. I've seen all of these. Them. By the way, see. side note: Swaggle has been announced for WrestleRex Two coming up next month. That, see, I was excited. Was the first to get excited. Was the okay. first. To get excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'd set you up for that. So, <clears throat> Leprechaun Origins, Ceno Evil Two. Oh, I have not seen the second one. The second Ooh. one's good. Okay, it's good. It's very good. Mm-hmm. And finally, Twelve Rounds. I remember Twelve Rounds, like the first Twelve, 12 rounds. rounds. Twelve Rounds is great. Isn't wait? Isn't the Dean Ambrose is the Dean Ambrose one Twelve Rounds three? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I think so, maybe, but Twelve Rounds. It's 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 legitimately my favorite WWE movie. Wait a minute, Twelve Rounds Two is the second one. Randy Orton was also a paramedic, wasn't he? Yes. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a... <laughs> do you, you don't think they originally wrote that for the Miz? Do you? Yeah, Randy Orton and the Miz. They're a pair of paramedics. Dan, ah. I have to say this on the show. Yeah. Uh, Dan puked on Hornswoggle in New Orleans. Dan Sandwich. He did. <laughs> puked on Swaggle in New Orleans. Uh, I can't tell you the whole story, but I'll tell you uh... <laughs> who hasn't puked on Swaggle. Well, he <laughs> we his reaction was pretty priceless. Okay. I was just like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" And then Dan just like, I'm like <laughs> oh, fuck. "Well, not getting over with Swaggle now." Nope. I had a little too much sandwich. He left his show early because he had puke on. <laughs> Oh, wow. Poor guy. I'm sure it's not the first time. <laughs> I mean, but I think everybody's WrestleMania experience involves somebody vomiting at some point, right? Well, especially in New Orleans. I didn't vomit. Was that Mike? I didn't vomit at Rainier. But did you did you witness any? No. Mm-mm. No. I witnessed I witnessed someone getting busted open over a a, a a fake wrestling fight in the on the middle of Bourbon Street, but other than that. <laughs> oh, okay. Why do I that, think that's I saw real. that too? It was, it was weird. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I swear, I think somebody was dead on Bourbon Street. I'm pretty sure we walked. We might have been in the same crowd. I think we were. We very well could have been in the same crowd. Did you like, Did you witness the people stepping in horse shit and everybody was like, "Oh, oh!" Yep. oh. I was in the same crowd as you, dude, because I was right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was walking back from this bar and I was like, "What the hell's going on?" And like people were just like going ape shit, and I was laughing my ass off because I was shit faced. So oh I'm yeah, like, I'm like I don't know what's going on, and I stopped, and everybody was just stepping in this huge pile of horse shit. Yeah, th- that was the same night I saw facade. I saw um, Luke Gallows trying to hit on women. I saw <laughs> Noel Foley. Like there's there's a bunch of stuff happening. Yeah, that you night. had a good night. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a good time. Uh, just to bring it back around, Tina Key says, yes, John Cena, Randy Orton, and Dean Ambrose all had the 12, 12 Rounds movies. I think I saw, I, I, I think I've seen all three of them. I, I do definitely remember the Dean Ambrose one. I definitely saw the John Cena one. That's back when they used to film everything in San Francisco for some reason <laughs> with WWE films. Uh, 12 Rounds 2 was originally for Punk. Mm. Mm. I think he talks about that on that one podcast. So, yeah. Well, WWE films, man, you guys. I have. I've never also never seen the um, one where David Otunga hangs out with Halle Berry or something. Otunga. Oh, was that the one where she got kidnapped? Like, there was a kidnap and something on the there. Like, one where she was a phone operator. Yeah. Like that was also a WWE film, but I'm not sure if there was anybody in that. Because there's that weird where they did it like a handful of them where just there were just ones they purchased and there were no WWE people in it. Mm-hmm. It was just they took it on as a movie studio for some I, reason. I still remember the the commercial plugging that movie though because it was Kane on the phone with Halle Berry. <gasps> oh yeah, yeah, it yeah, great yeah. Ad. It was Man. a great ad. Who was it? Was it? Sorry, I just recently finished the Hall of Fame, and I just remember them calling out that, "Hey, the, yeah, hey, there's the mayor of Knoxville." I feel like it was called like "Lost Call" or something. Or yeah, yeah. Some dumb title for a miss call. Movie. Miss call. Drop, no. drop, drop call. call. Right. I think it might have been drop call. That was just Hold on. The, I'm, I'm the, going, the I'm call. Going the Somebody look up the WWE Films uh, Wikipedia page right now. <laughs> I have, there might be some surprises because they got they got attached to some weird movies, and then he had like you know the fighting with the family. We talked about that when it came out. Of it was course. a great movie. It was a good movie, but it was just a little. Didn't I, make any sense. I feel like I feel you know. It didn't. I feel like if you are a wrestling fan and you watch NXT, you're very confused. Oh yeah. Oh, oh right? yeah. No, it wasn't a dramatization at all. No, 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 no. It was, no, no, it was no. a nice little story, and yeah. some of the stuff that is true in that is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that they actually filmed Paige leaving to go to America. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some cool stuff in there. I mean, generally, it's a good movie. Yeah. So I need to watch it again with kind of like I need to rewatch Endgame because I thought Endgame was going to end a certain way, and I keep waiting for the thing. No, it you did, know, didn't end the way you wanted no, it to. It, no, I don't know about the way I wanted it to. It but was a good ending. Did we talk about oh, this? Oh, this yeah. happened on the other thing. Maybe we'll talk okay. about it. Okay. Right. 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 Anyways, hold on, hold yes. on. We're gonna play a little game. All right, play a Are little game, and then I have to go to the, the ad. I mean, okay. I am going to name mm-hmm. a WWE film. <laughs> You need to tell me which WWE wrestler was in said film. Oh boy! Okay, I, like I will. This game. I will. I will give you four choices. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you guys ready? Go yes. for it. I'm not going to tell you the year Actually, of the movie. Don't tell out. me. I'm... All right. Um. Let's see. Let's start with armed response. What? <laughs> Um, <laughs> what the hell was okay, that? Hold on, hold on. I, I'm going to give you four choices since there are three people that will be guessing. Okay? Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. Dolph Ziggler, Charlotte, Seth Rollins, or Rusev? I'm going Dolph. Okay. Hmm. I'll take Seth. Okay. I'm going to go Dolph with you then. Did Dolph actually right. do a movie? The answer is Seth Rollins. Good job. No, Matt. Seth Rollins did a movie? Seth Rollins has done a movie. Seth Rollins did Sharknado, too. Called Armed Response. Armed Response. I don't know what to see it now. Okay. No idea. You're going to Google it, aren't you? Give us another one. All right. The movie is called Eliminators. Oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This one is. This one's definitely Dolph Ziggler. Hold on. I'm getting to the <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna guess Dolph Ziggler for everything. I'm gonna give you choices. Oh all my right. God, 2017 film. Cho- your choices are Seamus, Cesaro, wait, wait can- Alberto Del Rio, yeah, Wade Barrett, Wade Barrett, Wade Barrett. Yeah, it's Wade's movie. Yeah, I'm going Wade. Is everyone guessing Wade? Yeah. yeah. Everyone is correct. All right. He was, he was one of the villains in the movie. I saw it. Yeah, it was, it was on one, uh, ye old Netflix when I watched it. I think I might have watched that too. Out to theaters. <laughs> What's that? That one actually hit theaters. Oh. Well, he was only in it for a split second. I think he only had. Yeah. You said Colin, one Colin Farrell's role. in that too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. By the way, armed response. I'm looking at this. Wesley Snipes is in this one. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay. All we right. We need to make another Blade movie since we're talking about Wesley Snipes. All right. You guys ready for the next one? Yeah. The movie is 
Vendetta. Oh. No, that is. <laughs> go ahead. Go Vendetta. ahead. Wait, do you know it's work? Yeah, I think I know this one. Who, who do you think? Hold on. Go ahead and just Let's put your the things out. Go and put okay. Your um, Vendetta. Alberto Del Rio. Santino Morella. The Big Show. Or Dolph Ziggler. Santino Morella. <laughs> I'm going to step out of this one. I'm going to step out of this one. Okay. Uh, Matt? I'll take the show. Give me the show. Sorg? No, no, because I've seen this one. Well, then say the answer. If you no, know no, it. no. I'm going to step out. All right. Well, everyone else guessed. You can, you can. All right. Go for it. It is the big show. Mm -hmm. Santino did move. Oh, uh, Jingle All the Way too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Which, looking at that. Damn it! That was gonna be my next. Uh, one. Sorry, uh, Ven Vendetta. <laughs> isn't that the one also with uh, Superman? Which Superman? Uh, yeah, it's the one with uh, Dean Kane. That's the one where uh, Dean Kane was. Well, I, I asked Dean Kane what it was like to work with Big Show at Wizard World. Okay. Did he actually I, I, respond to that question? I, yes, he did. Huh? Yeah, we I, had we had a quite a conversation time. about how impressive Big Show has, is. Uh, has anybody been watching the show Happy in the Big Show? Yes, Big Show's killing oh, it. Oh no, Happy. I haven't watched the new one, new series yet. I, I just caught up with the the new season's really good. Oh geez, the, well, the first season was insane. Oh, it's just as insane. The if you season. like crazy shit, you watch that. Yeah, All right, I, I, have, I have one more movie. Okay. One more movie. Okay. Oh, the God. movie is called No One Lives. Oh, I know this one. Damn it, Sorg. Go, let me go last. All right. Um, is it Naomi, Brodus Clay, Cameron, or Nikki Bella? Brodus Clay. Matt? I'll take Brodus, yeah. Yep, Brodus. Yes, it is Brodus Clay. Was he killing people in that movie? Yeah, I think so. I would I would assume so. It is called No One Lives. Yeah. Well, he was the serial killer yeah, in the movie. I think, a, I think he was a serial killer now. Yeah. All right, who was in Condemned 2? Steve Austin. No, Condemned 2. Oh, uh, um, is that Orton? Yeah, Orton was the second yeah, one. Yeah, it was Orton. Yeah. Orton got a lot of direct sequels. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, boy. Whatever happened to Ted DiBiase Jr.? You know, he was in oh. Marine 2 is the joke there. Oh, do you want, do you want one more? <laughs> Why not? They take us out. Okay, all right. The movie is called Interrogation. Interrogation. All right. It's a, there's actually two wrestlers in this. Okay. So I'm going to give you three groupings of wrestlers. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you ready for this? this no, this I'm not. All right. Uh, Mr. Kennedy and Candace Michelle. Christian and Dana Brooke. Or Edge and Lana. Oh, that's the Edge and Lana one. That has to be. I'm going to go with you, Sorgi. Yeah. Uh, I'll take uh, Mr. Kennedy and uh, what's her name? Candace Michelle? Yeah. yeah. It's Edge and Lana. <laughs> Edge and Lana. Yeah, I'm right. it's the cop one, right? Uh... I, I, don't, I don't know what any of these are, to be honest. Christian did a movie. It was a, uh, a straight to DVD cheesy horror movie. I can't remember what it was called. But they tried to make it like Clerks, but it was just this random effing thing. I'll have to let you know. I can't remember the name of it. So it was more like. Um... It was filmed in Canada and it was only Canadian release. Mm -hmm. And I remember buying it off of eBay <laughs> just so I can watch it. This e was off like... of eBay, the website? Yeah. Um, uh, Ken Kennedy Anderson was also in a sequel. It was a. Um... Oh, behind enemy lines. Behind like, enemy lines. Like it was yeah. a random behind a trade video behind it. There were many of them, mm -hmm. not by WWE films, but okay. All right. Like, Bonus we, round. Damn it! We gotta come on. One, yeah. one more. One okay, more. Okay, last one. Last what one. What movie was the Ascension in? Oh shit! <laughs> sure, I don't know. Oh wait, wait, wait! Is it Countdown? Because everybody was in that because it was at a WWE show. Yes, it is. Okay, that, that come on. <laughs> come on. Sure, sure. No one else knew that, and I own the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. That's the one where Dolph Ziggler is holding a gun on Rusev, and Rusev kicks it out of his hand as yes, Rusev. And I thought Rusev was going to be a much more integral part. That's why I bought the movie. Very and sad. I was duped. Absolutely, <laughs> I was duped. Oh shit, uh, guys! Uh, I want to give a shout out, Ronnie. I think I should. I should let you do this ad at this point. Okay. Because we're talking about Scarehouse. 
Oh, yes. I will put the scare house in. <laughs> well, well, the scare house is doing the basement event, a special two night stand this weekend over there. Thought you were going to do the ad there. Uh, well, <laughs> well, like, well, I'm setting you up. Okay. Is what we're doing. It's a special uh, limited uh, the basement um, uh, situation. You get uh, your tickets at scarehouse.com uh, for that. And uh, while you're there, uh, and make sure you follow them on social media for all the updates. What the hell is the basement, and what can they expect from this? I understand there's a little bit of a greatest hits going on. Uh, the basement, I've gone every year since it's opened. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the greatest thing ever. Uh, basically, it is a hands-on entertainment and literally hands-on. They will do whatever they want to you. They the, can touch their you. Their hands are, are on you. Oh, yeah. yeah. They can touch you. They can electrocute you. They can put water on you. Uh, make you eat things? Oh, I've eaten things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've eaten uh, really disgusting cookies. I have eaten a bug before. Yes. Uh, there's been a lot of really ridiculous things in the basement, but it's mm-hmm. a very good time. I highly suggest, I know that some people like to go in groups of two, but I highly suggest you go by yourself because they are more hands-on that way. Mm-hmm. And from what I've heard, they like it when it's just by yourself. And um, this is, and I've gone through this as well. It's a very rated R experience, mm-hmm. and it's not. A, it's um, if you feel uncomfortable with touching, mm-hmm. that may be a thing. But it's not like they're not violently touching you. No, you know, this is just. I, I want to make that that clear too, uh, because that's what I was afraid. I was like, oh, this is an extreme. Like, am I gonna get like thrown down or something? That is not to that. Well, uh, things but, have uh, things have improved since the first year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first year was a lot more violent. Oh, was it? Because they were trying to figure out their format. How yeah, they yeah, wanted yeah. To do stuff. But I, I see it as if you go into it for me as interactive theater, mm-hmm. like that's where I think you're going to like the experience more. This is not a hand. It is not a hot house where you walk through and things jump at you. No, right? this is just yeah. straight up. You go into a room. They have a skit. They do stuff with you, yeah. and it's amazing. It's, I, I love it. It's great. Yeah. And then what in December, when they said they were going to do it in December, mm. dude, I was just straight up like, click, bought, I'm going. <laughs> and I was trying to get people to go, and no one was like, oh, don't go. I'm like, that's fine. I'll go by myself. I don't yeah. give a shit. Because like, they did do stuff. a basement, a Christmas basement along with, right? Yeah, it was very yeah. It was fun. It was well, very cool. I was a bush upstairs, and I think I scared you. You did scare me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I said, son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, a lot of people said that, so they didn't narrow it down. So go check, go check it out. Scarehouse.com. Our good friends there. Dudders. Uh, it does a lot of stuff there. And I believe, I don't know if it's running, but they have been doing some laser tag. Rogue Laser Grounds. It's running until the end of this month. Until this month. Okay. Yeah. Um, so go check it out. We, we actually got to go hang out there. I believe we, I'm trying to remember who all was there. Uh, it was Lee Moriarty. Uh, the gentleman was there. Hmm? It's, uh Victor Benjamin was there. Victor Benjamin was there, mm-hmm. and you were there. I was there. Yeah, for that, and we. Uh, <laughs> Victor and I made a good team because we pretty much dominated the world. Yes, <laughs> uh, it was. It, it's like it's like live action Halo. It was great. It, it's, it's amazing uh, the way they they have these guns set up and everything. It so was, it was a cool good time. Games. And there's even like a uh, 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 one person is the infected zombie ga- person mm-hmm. that starts, and we n- we could not last a five minute session without everybody getting infected. It's great. I think we played for a good two hours. We didn't did we? play for two hours. We were all blown up when we it was were, all yeah yeah up. but it was great you know <laughs> uh but uh yeah go check that out you can buy groups and, and stuff there mm-hmm. so check out scarehouse.com and roke laser grounds uh, mm-hmm. a lot of fun going over there with our friends there so let's th- again that's www.scarehouse.com mm-hmm. uh, and you can see dutters is part of the scarehouse weekly mm-hmm. that happens over there on the facebook and other social medias guys it's time to find out what did you learn from wrestling this week man mike oh i i learned Way too many things I didn't want to about the Bruiser <laughs> Brody situation. Oh, no. Yes. Man. I, I've watched that documentary. If you haven't watched that, it's a good documentary. But, man, it's going to it's gonna make you sad for a little while. It's, and it's going to make you, if you were just, like, kind of shake your head at Tony Atlas, um, I think you're not going to as much after this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, it, it, I've experienced Tony Atlas. And you, you'll have a new appreciation for Savio Vega. Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So, all right. Uh, what about you, uh, Ronnie Starks? What did you learn this weekend? Always wear your hard hat. <laughs> yeah, always wear your hard hat. And, uh, Man, that would have been like a pretty severe blow to your head, too, if you weren't wearing your hard hat. It's uh, – God. I'm lucky that those uh, cones aren't too heavy. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it was funny, but uh, I was a little aggravated afterwards. <laughs> but I laughed it off. Because yes. it was comedy gold, so you can't really be mad about that. Uh, what about you, uh, Mainstream Matt? 
Uh, I learned that um, Chris Jericho's charisma is so powerful that it caused me to re-up my subscription to New Japan World for another month just so yeah. I can see a fight. Oh, God, at Dominion! Wow. Oh, okay, that. I, might have to, I might have to tune into that, too. Yeah, he extends his uh, New Japan, and I uh, I quit my WWE Network. <laughs> <laughs> I say, not a problem with the network. I watch the network shit all day. I'm just not watching. I just, I'm just not happy on Monday nights. I'll watch New Japan. UK. I don't want to throw that away. <laughs> Because as pissed as we sound like we are on this podcast, and I, I don't want to be a bitch cast, but it kind of deserves it this week. <laughs> Tina Key says she learned that she's thankful for her New Japan and Power Slam TV subscription as alternatives to the other mainstream sports and entertainment entities uh, uh, as well. Well, there you go. I mean, it, yeah, they do great stuff over there at Power Slam. Oh, yeah. like Vin, Vin Gerard and the crew, uh, I can't believe the crazy shit that they're pulling off over there. It's great. Um, and uh, do, 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 do. what did I learn from this week? There's a lot. I learned... I learned that character development or professional wrestling is a beautiful thing. Ronnie, I think you know what I'm talking uh, about. You know what? We can't. Dude, we can't ta- say anything about this. But, but it was gold because, you know, we're all sitting in an apple. Quick story without actually giving anything up. Yes. Uh, we're not going to say who we gave this idea to, but uh, a bunch of us were sitting at Applebee's and we all brainstormed with the greatest gimmick ever. Mm-hmm. And I, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Whether he wants to do it or not, this he, kid, he has to. Well, he's a, he's a young kid that, that doesn't have much of a gimmick right now. No. And he's he's sitting around with, obviously, you see what Ronnie does. And he uh, there were other people that are very much larger than life characters, we'll say, uh, in what they do in pro wrestling. And, I mean, if they're saying, God, you need to do this. I legit got down on my hands and knees and begged him. I have a picture do, of this. Do you? I've been, I've been refraining from putting this on social do media because I don't want I don't, cause no, I'm just don't, like, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, 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 no. But, but I legit, it, is, it is an amazing image. I legit begged him. I'm like, dude, you don't have a gimmick. This is it. Mm-hmm. This is what's going to get you book places. It's going to be great. This mm-hmm. is what people need. And his accent is fantastic. His accent is greater than him speaking English. Yeah. So. He needs to do this. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't, I'm going to be very disappointed in him. Absolutely. We'll never let him live it down. No, he needs to do it. If it doesn't work, then fine. But I, I could, man... I can't wait to show this to the Mayhem Nation out there. Oh, I think I think it. I think you guys are going to eat this up too. So they're going to love it. Yes. Um, now that we're now that we're talking in vagaries, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, man, uh, and I will say it's somebody you who's, have my attention. You have oh, your attention. Just wait. We'll have, to, we'll have to tell you off air. Yeah. Um, oh, I I, I it's you got a you got a slight heads up. It has something to do. I got, with, I got a taste. That was that coming to America tweet the other night. Uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> put that out there um I think but the music i sent you was perfect too. the music was great <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it was the right one that i tweeted but because you sent me a couple tracks yeah but, but the last yeah. one i sent you it was dead on God, i'm gonna watch news. coming to america while I'm, wa- I'm editing the show tonight now i hope it's on netflix oh, uh, or something i have uh anyways uh no it's great um uh, you know what I, I it's always a roller coaster between monday night raws and shitty experiences in wrestling life whatever and then i go to something with uh, hands down always between especially these weekends where i do rise and black diamond out of the month is you know and i love all the people that we work with uh, right now uh and uh it, it is probably the most fun weekend mm-hmm. doing rise and black diamond because generally is the most positive groups that i work with mm-hmm. um and a lot of that bleeds over into the other promotions that i work with too uh, so, but, but like the epicenter is like that group at rise and, and BDW for me. Uh, so, uh, it's really cool to see that and, uh, hang with you guys and be able to film some cool shit. Um, <laughs> rise wrestling is up on the network right now. Indie wrestling dot network. Uh, Ronnie Starks, where can people find out more Ronnie Starks stuff and, uh, watch Ronnie Starks videos <laughs> as well, because we we need to get more people to watch those. Uh, everybody, you can find me on the Facebook at Ronald F. Starks. Yeah, I, I have a middle name now. Guess what the F stands for? What does for? the F stand for? <laughs> well, uh... Ronnie keep... F and Starks? Shut up and let me tell the goddamn story. All right, so uh, you can take it either way. You can call me Ronald fucking Starks, or you can call me Ronald Franklin Starks, which, uh, if we're going to go with the PG route, we'll go with Franklin as my middle name. But... Shit. But in reality, it's Ronald fucking Starks. So, but we can't. Is Franklin a f- Fantastic Four reference? Yes. Sweet. Yeah. You can tr- Dude, deep cuts, man. All, deep cuts. For, first of all, my last name is Iron Man. Yes. And my middle name is from uh, Fantastic Four. It seemed pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, but uh, uh, yeah, and you Franklin guys can... is the Richards' son. Yeah. I, yes. So yeah, Franklin. That's uh, my actual real middle name is Frank. So I just went with Franklin, but I also did that too for go. Fantastic Four. Now you guys know, you know, my middle name. That's fucking Fantastic. great. And um, and uh, yeah, uh, on the Twitter machine, you can follow me at Starks Wrestling. Uh, look up Ronnie Starks and OSHA Incorporated or MT OSHA on the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Where we have a lot of really funny promos, and I promise you guys will laugh. Some good stuff with the uh, Beast Man. Yeah, it's it's classic. And, and battling the McKee's port. Oh yeah, city. Did, <laughs> should I tell them when they can see me this weekend? Uh, yes, you can do that on the show. Uh, <laughs> that's kind. I guess I have to. Uh, <laughs> this Saturday, you guys can catch me in McKee's port, Pennsylvania, for Fight Society. Uh, we are having a how do, how do six three is six, a three nine, way six. It is a, three, damn, it's not a six man tag. It's a th- three, okay. Six, no, it's a nine. it's a three way three six nine. Three six nine. The damn I'm fine. No, to the window, to the wall, to the wall, to the, wall. To the sweat drip from my from balls. Watch your bitches crawl. Ah, skeet 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 skeet, skeet motherfucker. Skeet skeet. Goddamn. Anyway. All right. <laughs> If you sing enough of that song, a wild Dutters appears. <laughs> She'll come out of there, Ronnie, what are you singing? I'm like, oh shit, you're still here, Dutters. But, uh, all right. Is that why she was prostituting herself? <laughs> Let's get back to that. That wasn't on there, Mike. Go ahead. All right. I'm kidding. I'm it kidding. is a three way trios match. Three way trios match for the. There's uh, a, what is the belt called again? <laughs> I call them the Triforce titles. <laughs> um, the Triple That's Crown Champ. Triple there's Crown! A tri- there's a Triforce on the title. Oh. But, uh, yeah, the Triple Crown Championship, it's uh, the Grumpy Old Men versus Team Fear, which uh, a certain Missy Sorg created the name Team Fear. Oh, I didn't know that. Shout out shout out to Missy Sorg over there. Nice. And uh, the Grumpy, what did I say? Did I say Grumpy Old Men already? Yes. All right, yeah, so and there's then, three and teams. Then there, and there's, then there's your team. Oh, yeah, then us. We're in it, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, OSHA Incorporated. <laughs> I'm in this match. I'm, guys, I'm wrestling on Saturday, uh, apparently. Uh, Ocean Incorporated, uh, myself, uh, Samage, and uh, Dustin Vane. And that is the Beast Brawl. Yes. And if you do not check that out here this weekend, that also will be a part of ProWrestlingNetwork.com. Yes. And, uh, I'm sorry, PWNNetwork.com and IndieWrestling.us on and, VOD. Uh, a very important fun fact. Uh, mm-hmm. Ron actually had a hand in training me. So the beast, the beast had a hand in training. The beast had it, yeah. So Fantastic. I'm really excited to be a part of the show. Good. And good. Uh, we'll see what happens. Will we win the titles? Will we not win the titles? Yeah, we'll, we'll find out, eh? We'll find out. Nobody knows. No, I, I don't even know. You, you guys <laughs> don't even know. So you know. Nobody knows. It's a fight society. It's not wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> except for the all I know is ex- I'm in for a fight. Except for the tag tag matches. The tag matches are tag rules. T- I'm, I don't. I'm trying are to they? Get. Are they tag rules? Yeah. Unless I knew. I don't know. You I thought were, everything was like you were, rules. you were in one. Weren't you doing tag rules? Yeah, well, yeah. You know Maybe they just announced it like yeah, on you that remember, show. You remember when I wrestled twice Do in one know? weekend? Yeah. Oh, that was that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. How I'm long excited. Have, how long have it been since you wrestled? Like actually wrestled. You know, you know, it's funny now that I got in shape. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, well, since you're in better shape now, uh, hey, and I'm like, oh, like legitimately, I walk in the building and I like see my name on the rundown sheet. I'm like, oh, so, okay, <laughs> 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 I'm like that's cool. No, it's been oh god, a couple years. A couple years, yeah. Yeah, doing since, the manager thing. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy with whatever I'm Good. put in, and I'm really excited about being a part of the trios with Good. my best friends. Good. So. If yeah. nothing else, I mean, at least you're not doing like a one-on-one Broadway. No. You're, you're in a trios match. <laughs> yeah, I, could, <laughs> tri- I couldn't carry You're in anything. a trios match with three teams. Yeah, somebody would have mean, to carry me if I had to do a single I mean, match. you know, I mean, you're amongst nine people, if yeah. not more, depending on how this plays out, because it's Fight Society. I just, you know, I just got to go out there, do a couple little things, <laughs> tag out, get back in there, do, do a couple thing, little do, things. Do to do, 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 and... Uh, and then, you know, do a little dance, do a little shuffle, <laughs> you know. Violate somebody and move on. Yeah, you're going to violate everybody in the key sport, you know. <laughs> It'll be a good time. Well, thank you for coming on and violating this show here. There you go. One last time for you. Ronnie Starks of OSHA Inc. Mad Mike for 3 on the tweets. Oh, I'm going to unviolate him. There you go. Through a violation. There Mad you Mike. go. Uh, <laughs> 483 on the Twitters as well as. This is where you do your bet. Mike. 
No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Oh, you're not doing it anymore. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Mainstream Matt, we talked about, but go check his yep. writings and his past writings as well over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thanks, Dorky. There you go. I thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat room all night long. And please check out everything. And check out Ronnie Starks again on IndieWrestling.us uh, under the OSHA, MT OSHA banner. And I'll there's a lot of gifts for you on the Indie Wrestling US gift page. Did you so, put more up? Uh, not lately, no. Um, I, I didn't have a chance to, but uh, uh, there, there will definitely be more as I get through these shows. I have two Black Diamond shows to edit still. Oh, God, so, so many gifts. Oh, so many. That's usually when the gifts come. So uh, <laughs> there you go. A lot of stuff going on out there. Thank you, everybody, joining us. Uh, next week is episode 666. We are scheduled to have Gory, the New Age Plague, with us. As well as apparently Shirley Doe wants to be a part of this too. <laughs> he found out while, during this show. So we, but hey, we'll put it out there. If you're a spooky wrestler and you've been on the show before, uh, come on down for episode 666. We'll have a monster party. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.